But never I say my pen dream TV. Pen dream TV there. I see them. Yopo. Me ma wa kwa ba edi ba pen dream TV. So make sure say obe subscribe to channel. No no a click bell. No so say the the news to our on sabi to me a can in term no wait here. A face so make sure say obe like it. Now nah, what comment and what share I'm a full for soon saka. Now comment session or so no person or chill I've been a bit me and they were doing chill at to honum na man for so and you be a king kind. Now only set and dream TV dear. And yeah, and some I cost to a gana and politics money a day banner. Yes, I can't nearly a brain tina so me video I and saka a person no chair and a day banner tea. Remember more the answer so over her video way. I'm an ACA year. Now watch your wife in our comment session. I see. And I think that you yeah, you have a government where you have cutlasses being taxed, condoms being taxed, <laughs> you know, and even savings. There was a one percent imposition on savings, which was later withdrawn. An investments, yes. investments, mm, mm. which was later. I mean, even to think about it was was it's, well. It's, it's been suspended. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it's so been suspended. I mean, I mean but even to think abolished. about it. Mm. Oh, it's now abolished. Yes. Is it? Okay. Okay. Yeah, Good. but even to think Good. about it, mm. it doesn't. It just questions who are making these policies. I mean, we, but isn't I mean, it isn't just it, another way? Another um, way you know, of raising it, revenue. Well, yes, but when you become desperate, this is what happens. That when you've mismanaged the economy mm. into this hole, then anything sounds great to you because you don't have any option. The MPP will shift the focus of the economic policy away from taxation to production. So we are going to move away from taxation to production. From taxation yeah, the, the, the vice president, um, again, I think, I don't know how many minutes we have, but mm. um, I explained the issue of um, what happened with condoms and all those things, uh, but we know what is going on today. But frankly, if you look at the number of levies, you know, that have been put today in comparison, you know, with, you know, the four which I mentioned, you know, which all had sunset trade, which all had sunset clauses. I mean, the verdict is there. You know, that's, you know, um, it, it was a lie. You know, I'm looking for mm. trying to be, not to be very harsh with my mm. language. You know, it was completely because, you know, at the time we had done, as I said, there was a fiscal stabilization levy and there was a, a temporary imports, you know, duty which they took on and they continued with it. Mm. You know, even after they came to power, they couldn't, you know, take them, you know, uh, off. As for, you know, the blame game, today he's blaming GRA. <laughs> you mm. know, so you see, right? Why don't you go to your, evaluate your performance, right? Just as you were evaluating your predecessor's performance. Now you are blaming the agency that is under the Ministry of Finance. Right, we doesn't set the targets. They contribute in setting the target, but ultimate decisions to the Ministry of Finance. Mm. They contribute in the sense that they hold a database, right, for all the taxes because they are in the field, they are collecting, and they help with the projection. Let me clarify this because mm. it's creating some confusion that mm. I was also saying that the GRA, you know, says no. I'm saying that during the budget hearing, mm. just like all we meet all agencies mm. with their ministries. GRA is an agency of the Ministry of Finance. Mm. And what does GRA do? GRA collects taxes with the government mandates. And GRA has a very elaborate database which they started setting up for year piece up. And so if you are going to implement a policy, GRA can go in and tell you the effects of that policy. Mm. GRA can tell you that this is a trend, you know, of performance. You both nominal and real, right? And therefore, uh, Minister, if you are going to implement this, you are going to, this is the, for example, the benchmark which he was talking about, which he said he, they changed it to just a benchmark, reduction of the value. Remember, he said they were going to abolish import duty. Mm. Mm. How do you do that as a developing country? You remember what I explained already? Mm. You want to open up, and what they did when they, come, when they came to power, you know, was to, reduce the value of imports. You remember the cost mm. I was talking about? Mm. If you reduce the value of imports, you know, to, from 100 to 50, if you're supposed to 10%, you're supposed to collect 10, you collect 5. 
And that's how come the, the, the whole system was started because mm -hmm. you never. And what do you do? You encourage others, even people who are importing to Burkina Faso and others, using our post, you know, to take advantage of this and smuggling the goods and all that. Right? So I, I, I think that some of these things are just things which I say in any event, you know, like the amnesty, which I said. There was an amnesty in 2017. Tell us how that amnesty performed. There was a benchmark. Today is repeating the same thing on import duties and all those things. Tell us the import duties are waived, you know, from auto to everything. Yes, some are needed for incentives and then. Where is accountability for it? And you go back and you blame GRA, you blame, you continue blame, blaming President Mahama, you know, and the rest. In any event, we, we did not increase the uh, tax rates. The tax rates were increased by this administration. Mm. Uh, the personal income tax and the corporate income tax, which has been increased, you know, to 35 percent, they were 25 percent. So they increased it. Uh, the VAT we were talking about, you remove a VAT, you say it's not part of VAT, then you increase the VAT rate, and that rate, you know, continues to be part of the system. That's what we should be talking about. Mm. You know, so they increased the VAT rate. We didn't increase it. They removed it and denied input tax credit, mm. you know, to... I, I said in my earlier introduction that, you know, when I was talking about ERP, SAP, and what we did, you know, the, the, the corporate income tax rate used to be at 55 and 65%. And they were brought down gradually over a decade until we got to the 20, 25%, which they have now come after 40 years to increase to 35. And yes, sir, you know, the highest point, this year they said it will be the record, but the highest point of tax to GDP ratio it's 2015. Despite all the levies and things that have been, the highest point, the data is there. It's 2015. So what have they achieved with all the increases in taxes and other things? You know, so uh, Randy, uh, the, let me also address this issue of investment. Mm. You see, it was a policy discussion that was taking place in many countries. When you invest in table, when you invest in even the stock market, corporate, you know, and others, the investment is not tax. We're not talking about the investment. But the income you are earning, right, the income you are earning, right, is income. And the debate is, if you sell, we we'll exclude residential housing. But if you invest in commercial property and you sell it, you pay capital gains tax. It's on the books. That's your form of investment, right? It's a house. Sorry, an office building which you want to rent because residential, as I said, you know, is excluded. What is the difference then between another taxpayer? You know, fairness is a very important principle in, in taxation. How about a person who puts his money in investments in the form of paper investments, securities, bonds, and the rest? We are not talking about, as for uh, your, your house, uh, your, this, you pay rent tax. It's another form of income when you sell it. So we are saying when you liquidate the capital gains or the income you are earning, at the moment it's blanket. And we are saying that this was blanket at a time when the government needed money back in the 60s and 70s, when the tax regime had it matured. So as part of the discussion, is it time to be rethink some of these things? Because as your economy changes. You know, I mean, services. Who, who spoke about services back in the even 70s and 80s? Right? Started from the, the 19, early 1990s into the 2000s, services sector and the rest. Right? And that also leads to another one, which is we were not going to tax interest because interest is, is on your savings. It's no income. You are going to save. What we're going to tax under the VAT, which they, have, they are reintroducing in various ways, is ATM. If you go to US and ATM, is it a service? How is it different from architects giving you advice? Right? So it is a fee that you pay for ATM and for all those financial services that, you know, is the target of the tax. So it's not savings. Right? So. But it's very easy to pick these things. And you see that now they've come and from e-levy to everything, you know, 
the same notion is coming in, but in different forms. Mm. You know, why don't you strip the deity? You remove VAT and you talk about ye levy. The ye levy actually taxes the money on, in your wallet which you transfer. Not a fee, not just a fee. That's one of the handicaps of this thing. But we are saying, we are not targeting your interest. You, I mean, it's savings. And a VAT is not consumption, it's savings. Until you take that interest and you go and buy a commodity or something, then we tax it. But when you take that interest and you go, you know, in an advanced economy like ours, and you go and use the ATM. You are using the services of uh, additional services. Okay. We Let's quickly move to the former finance minister. He speaks about, about 10 billion cities on interest, no fiscal space, um, the exchange rate. Um, he, he speaks about also uh, thinking that you can borrow your way out of a messy situation, a value for money. <laughs> That's what I said. I, mean, I have just one aspect. He couldn't hear himself. He couldn't hear himself. He heal himself. Because he has done Westerns, isn't it? Really? Of course he has. Look at the, look at, we left, you know, uh, of course he's using nominal values. Mm. So you can translate the debt at 100%. We never go to 95%. Because COVID and Russia, you could. We never go to 95% anyway. Mm. I already explained COVID and Russia. Mm. What about all the money that flowed in? What did you do with them mm. to resolve them? Mm. You know, what, what did you do? Why, why did you prepare for COVID instead of understating? So that you put more money into the stabilization fund and don't go and be borrowing, you know, as we were attempting to do. Exchange rate. Exchange rate. Mm. What's the exchange rate today? Mm. You know, and by the way, the 1.2 is talking about, remember the real denomination had just taken yes. place two years old. Yes. Yes. So you can say that within one, one and a half years, they had increased it by 0.2. Mm. And you could have seen the trajectory, you know, that was being followed. Mm. If the thing is one to one, in fact, it was 90 point something to one. And then within one and a half years of taking over, it's moved to 0.2. I think the evidence is there. Mm. The rate of the decision. Well, what do you make of the conduct of the central bank in all of this? Um, who bowed on the central bank? That's my question. Who put pressure on the central bank to do the deficit financing? The central bank says. It's not a decision that the government. The central bank made. says that by law. Um, 5%. Is that by but yeah, they say by law they 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 are enjoined to come in and salvage the economy. Whatever they did was to save the economy. Well, yes, I know the economic emergency that they declared, mm -hmm. and I know there are lawyers who disputed it anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, and maybe we need to revisit that because if the governor can take that decision mm -hmm. in spite of all the other flows, then maybe it needs to go to parliament, you know, for and I say in all honesty, you know, for them to review. You know the conditions under which you know the governor has a power, right? Mm. But I would have thought that the more sober, uh, relatively speaking, uh, speeches that were given, you know, when things were getting out of hand in Legon and other places, I sat in there. Mm. The more sober, you know, reflected what actually happened. Mm. The one that was delivered in Legon, and then the one that was delivered, you know, at the annual meeting of the. Uh, managers of banks at Aliza Hotel, you know, I, I find that to be more reflective mm -hmm. of the pressure that, you know, the fiscal authorities were bringing to bear, you know, on the governor to monetize the economy. I don't respect the governors. Some of them, as I said, governors were contemporary, you know, um, more or less, uh, because he was uh, in the research department at the time, knew him very well. Uh, I know Maxwell very well, and I know, and I know them. I mean, in terms of their, you know, uh, uh, qualification and expertise and all that. And Maxwell had done missions like I did at Fine and the rest. So, um, so I would put more premium on those sober reflections that he did as a warning to the government that the fiscal was getting out of hand. Mm. Because you couldn't even, uh, the most, how many countries finance the third deficit? Was it only Canada was affected mm. by COVID? That's a question which even many people are asking. Was it only Ghana that was affected by COVID? And remember what I said. The fund is now saying that we're pre-existing conditions, you know, before COVID. So if we got all this money to resolve COVID, was the additional financing actually meant to resolve those pre-existing conditions, which some of us have said mm -hmm. for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So that's an open question.